when bins of VHS tapes containing recordings of the bilingual locally produced show Vecinos, which means neighbors in Spanish, were donated to the Holyoke Public Library, they knew that they had to act fast to preserve them. The show was produced in the early 90s, and with the lifespan of VHS tapes being around 30 years, time wasn't on their side. In April of 2019, the library was awarded funding through a Recordings at Risk grant to digitize the tapes and preserve their history. Connecting Point Zydelis Bauer sat down with Sylvia Galvan, co-producer of the program, and Betty Medina Lichtenstein, executive director of Enlace de Familias, to learn more. Well, the show began uh, Vecinos Neighbors through um, public access in Holyoke. And uh, back in 91, uh, Carlos Vega and I um, wanted to show uh, positive things about Holyoke. Uh, there were a number, or there are a number of negative things that are always on the news, but we, we, we wanted to counteract that. So we were trained, and we started having a um, um, one-hour uh, show a week magazine style, kind of, um, just positive things about uh, Holyoke and the Latino community. Uh, we expanded to the Pioneer Valley, but it was mostly uh, Holyoke. Uh, we lasted five, six years doing that, and uh, the tapes went into storage. Years passed, and uh, the board of the library knew about this, and so Eileen Crosby, the historic librarian, wrote a grant. It's through the Mellon Foundation, Tapes at Risk, or something like that. Recordings at Recording Risk. Recording at Risk, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, program, uh, got the grant, and uh, we actually have more than 100 tapes. Uh, we have identified 100, but it's about 173. Uh, some um, are not quite labeled, so they need to be digitized. You were mentioning that Vecinos Neighbors started back in 1991, so these tapes have been around for a while. Why was there such urgency to preserve these tapes? The lifespan of uh, Super VHS tapes is about 30 years, and so we're reaching the end of it. And there's a lot of history within those shows. Uh, there were a number of suits, you know, bilingual suit, a uh, voter registration suit, uh, that we were able to um, interview the plaintiffs. And uh, we did it in both languages, in English and Spanish, uh, not only to inform the community at large, but to inform uh, the Latino community. Yeah. yeah, and Betty, you're really active in the community still. What kind of impact can these tapes have on the community once they're able to view them? Enormous. Um, when we think about the conversations and the issues that the community is grappling with today, um, I sit in many meetings where we look at each other and we go, how long have we been talking about this? How many different kind of actions haven't we taken to be able to change things? 25, 30, 35 years. I've been in Holyoke 42 years, and some of those issues continue. Um, right before this segment, we were um, kind of naming some. Um, there's voter registration that's going on right now. The census 2020 is going on. How do we get the community mobilized to be able to take full advantage of both of those issues? Um, so what was being recorded and what was being documented um, at that time and moving forward, uh, it lends itself for research, it lends itself for action, and it also allows us to reflect um, what we have been successful in and where we have not. Silvia, it was pretty groundbreaking at the time, back in the 90s, to have this bilingual program co-produced by community members. Talk to me about that experience. As far as I know, uh, in, in Massachusetts at the time, I don't know now, we were the only ones that did it and for so long. Uh, not a lot of people know that for one, um, you know, an, an hour show, um, you need how, how much time to prepare it, you know, to write the script, to, you know, so we spent hours in there. But also the other side of it is that uh, when we were in Holyoke, we, I, I'm a retired educator from Holyoke, uh, my students recognized what was happening. Uh, they saw my name, they saw Carlos's name, they saw Gary's name, my husband, and, and uh, he was also an educator. And so to see that somebody like us could do that, regular folks could do that, uh, it really 
it's a type of power that you give people when you expose them. Um, when they see, you see their faces, they can see their, their own families. Uh, you know, we used to feel at festivals. Um, it really empowered them, like, yeah, we do exist. Betty, once the digitization process is completed, how do you think this could benefit the community? In so many ways. One is, is, is that, um, what's that saying that we say, um, you need to know what has happened in order to move forward, right? And so um, I think about it in many different ways in terms of um, looking at what um, issues the, the community at large and also the Latino community have struggled with. All of the things that um, Sylvia and Gary and Carlos documented, everything from parades and festivals, everything from actions, grassroots actions in voter registration and in census, um, things that in the, in the everyday life um, that it usually goes undocumented, they caught it. They were able to capture that. And for me, that gives our community life way beyond our presence on earth.